In this video, I traveled to Tulum. I ate delicious local food at the market. I visited Tulum ruin with a stunning view. I also explored a lesser known Maya ruin called Muil and had a serene experience with the nature. It was awesome. I took a bus from Prada Garden yesterday to Tulum and I was pretty much on the run all day. I arrived at Tulum by 8 p.m. and it was kind of late, so I pretty much didn't do anything. I just took a rest. I didn't even eat anything. And today is my first day of exploring Tulum. I'll be staying in Tulum for roughly five days, and this is the hotel I'm staying. It is pretty cool. I think the name is Eek, and it is still in the pre opening stage. So, not everything is finished. You can still see some constructions around. And this location is a little bit off the grid, a little bit far away from downtown. But Tulum is a pretty small town, so it's like 10 minutes walk. This is close to the Tulum archaeological site. It's like literally right across the jungle. The road leading to this hotel is not even finished. Like, there's no pavement, but just like a dirt road with uh, all the pebbles and stuff. But this is a really cool hotel. Again, it is not finished, but I really like the style. It's very modern, and all the windows in the rooms are floor to ceiling. Reminds me of my fancy apartment I used to live in in New York City. I'm gonna show you around a little bit so you can see what I mean. Like the design is really cool. It's a little like minimalistic, and it's also got like gardens inside, and it's like open air setting and everything. It is really good, and the price is also really good. It's like $50 per night, similar to all my other stays in Cancun and by Garmin, but this one has the best hardware. Well, let's go. Let's head to the market first and eat something. I will take it from there. I have just left the hotel and on my way to the market. And as you can see, this is what I mean by this place don't have a proper road. It's all like dirt road and pebbles, but the hotel like right there, that's really cool though. It's a little bit of a work to drag my luggage all the way to here when I get off the bus station, but uh, once I'm settled in, it's all good. Finally, after about 15 minutes walking, I arrived at this market, Kal Ashihil. It is so hot here. There's no shade on my way here. I'm about to melt. I can't even talk. Let's get there. Now I have seated inside the market. As you see, same or similar setup as other markets of different cities that I visited. I always like to visit the local market and try the local food, but I have to say, like, it, it was really hot here. Like, I can't even speak properly. It's 32 Celsius outside, and uh, I'm absolutely melting. They got a fan over there. It's slightly better now, but as you can see, it's like sort of not open air. They have like this roof thing on the top, which is like translucent, so the light still goes through, which is nice, but at the same time, it's just, it's just really hot. I'm not sure if I want to do the same thing over the next couple of days, because, uh, you know, walking there, under that scorching sun is absolutely brutal but well whatever i choose it okay first thing first i have to have some drink i'm so hot so this is cucumber chaya and lemon chaya is the leaf of the plant that i mentioned i have several times during my visit look at the presentation very rustic mm. Mm. Um, refresh grounded. much better mm. this is much needed okay so here's the food first one Cochinita PB, you already know this one, succulent pig from the Yucatan region. It is marinated in anato seeds and citrus juice. And we have some tortilla chips and guacamole and some rice and beans. This one is on its own. Before that, I eat this with taco or I eat it with sapute. And we have uh, two sauces here. This is tomato and this is habanero. This is a spicy one. This is just the, the beans. Cochinita first. Mmm. Yeah, very good. Oh my god. I have eaten this so many times, but every time I eat it, the flavor just still gives me that satisfaction, that punch. Mmm, there's a cartilage in there. Fortunately, that flavor is so good. You got that intense porky flavor, a hint of citrus, savory tortilla chips with avocado. Mm. I'm gonna try a bit of the sauce tomato, habanero. Mm. Oh. This is a spicy one. Okay, moving on. Next one we have papazure. This is also a traditional Yucatan dish. Never had this before. This one looks like an enchilada. You have like this green sauce, some red sauce, maybe tomato, and some eggs on top. Okay, let's see what this one is about. Oh, it's like, it's egg stuffing inside. Enchilada type of thing with boiled eggs inside and boiled eggs on top with the salsa. Mm. It's just like an enchilada, but instead of chicken, it's boiled and sliced egg. This dish was made with pepita salsa, mm. also known as sikil pak in Mayam. Mm. It's a Yucatan specialty made with pumpkin seeds, tomatoes, and green chilies. A little bit of green chili, a bit of tomato. This is not spicy at all. There are quite some size egg inside, and the egg yolk, because it's hard boiled. So when you chew it, it gives you that little bit like a 
mushy, compact, soft texture, which is very different from the enchilada with chicken. It feels different in your mouth. This mildly nutty sauce with its creamy texture combined with the egg yolk gave me somewhat of a hard time deciphering the flavor on the first try. This enigmatic creation left me pleasantly perplexed. I might add a bit of salsa to this. I'm not sure if that's the way you eat it, but um, the flavor for this one is pretty safe for gringos. Some more habanero. Mm, a little bit kick definitely helps, especially in this weather. I'm gonna make a cochinita taco. I feel like if I add all this liquidy thing to a taco, it's just gonna drip all over, so just a little bit. Mm. Mm. The lime juice create the synergy with the citrus juice marinated even better. That is the meal. I am full now. Let's get out of here. Okay, now we have a bit of situation here. I finished my lunch, then I took the Collectivo to Tulum Ruin. But it turns out it's already closed. But that's not my problem because it's supposed to close at 5. Sun says 4, but Sun says 5. Then I got there before 4, whatever, right? Then it turns out it is closed at 3.30 because part of the ruin is now under renovation or construction or something like that. So the government changed the time but did not update it on the website. As a result, I got there, it's already closed. I kind of just wasted my time. But uh, one of the guys there told me that I can also walk that way to the beaches. I can kind of see the ruin from the ocean. It's better than nothing, right? I mean, I'm already here. It's like 15 minutes walk one way, so like half an hour. Now I have entered the National Park of Tulum. So I have to buy separate tickets for this route that goes to the, the beaches and all. There are a couple of them still walking on my way to the beach. And I do see some constructions along the way. This route has not been too bad because most of them are in shade, so it's not as hot. I see some people walking, but I think it's mostly for bicycles and cars to drive and ride through. Yes, indeed, they're building facilities for the beach, bathroom, things like that. Okay, I believe this is the little road to the beach. Let's check out the public beach here. Right there, you can already see it. Finally, I arrive at the beach. The temperature is much more tolerable thanks to the breeze. It's much more comfortable. I'm glad that I wear a pair of sandals. Oh, actually I could see the ruin, but it's like very tiny from there. You probably can't even tell, so definitely will require a dedicated visit tomorrow. Woo. I better wash my sandals. It almost get blasted away when I was walking barefoot. Also, there are all these algae-like stuff. I've pretty much enjoyed my little walk here. Now it's time to get back. I've got back at my hotel. Now it's kind of late. There's nothing much to do out there. Plus, Tulum isn't the safest city at night, so I'm not going anywhere. And uh, I wasn't that hungry because of the earlier meal I had today. So I'm probably gonna skip my dinner entirely. I'm just gonna call it a day and chill at my hotel. Tomorrow, I'm gonna wake up really early to see the Tulu ruin at its finest. Next day, I have wake up really early. Now it is 8 a.m. I am going out to see the ruin of Tulu. I also had my new friend Lisa joining me for the day, whom I met the previous day while looking at a iguana on the road. Tulu ruin is a popular archaeological site and tourist destination located in eastern Yucatan Peninsula of Mexico, along the Riviera Maya. It's one of the most well-preserved coastal Maya cities in Mexico, and it's known for its stunning location overlooking the Caribbean Sea. Originally known as Zama, which means stone in the Mayan language, these well-preserved ruins were inhabited from the 6th to the 16th century upon the Spanish arrival. Tulum was a major trading port and a ceremonial center for the Mayan civilization, serving as an important hub for exchange of goods like jade and turquoise. It also played a role in astronomic observations, with certain structures aligned with the movements of the sun and stars. The ruin is situated on a cliff overlooking the Caribbean Sea, providing breathtaking views of turquoise waters and white sandy beaches. Oh look, it's raining out there. The ruin also features well-preserved structures, including a large stone wall that serve as defensive fortification, temples, and palaces. Of course, there's always iguana here. There's iguana literally everywhere. The most iconic structure is El Castillo, a pyramid-like temple perched on the edge of the cliff. Tulum is a unique blend of historical significance and natural beauty, offering visitors a chance to explore Mayan history while enjoying the breathtaking seaside scenery 
making it a must visit for travelers. Okay, now I have finished visiting Tulum. Now I have taken a collective road back to downtown. And now I plan to head to Muyil, which is another Maya ruin, also by Collectivo. Well, there's a situation here. Originally, we were planning to go to Muyil, but apparently the local kind of confused with the name. And they sent us to Chemui, which is like a little town out of nowhere in the opposite direction. I was trying to find a way back. I think there are also Collectivos back to the town. And, well, but this is the town, unexpected visit. Okay, now I'm back at downtown Tulum again. Before I head to Muyi, I'm gonna have something real quick. There is a taqueria here, some local food. I'm just gonna have something quick, not too much, because I have a reservation at Arca tonight. Check out this one. This quesadilla is literally the smallest quesadilla I have ever seen in my life. Okay, now I'm just sitting inside this taqueria. I'm gonna have something real quick. I only have about 15, 20 minutes before our collective will arrive, so I just have three simple sapotes and that's it. It's okay. The meat is a bit dry. Not the best, but again, it's all about the speed. That is a quick meal. It's whatever, but uh, it gets the job done. Now, heading to Muyid. Finally, I have arrived at Muyid Ruin, the correct one, and it just rings, so the temperature is much more tolerable. Nestled within the pristine beauty of the Siang Am Biosphere Reserve near Tulum, Muyil is another significant, albeit lesser known, archaeological site. Also known as Chung Yashche, Muyil is an ancient Maya city that dates back to approximately 300 BC. It was inhabited for over a thousand years, making it one of the region's oldest continuously occupied settlements. Muyil was a trading hub and played a significant role in the commerce of goods like salt, which was harvested from nearby lagoons. The site also had a ceremonial and religious significance within the Maya civilization. The architecture at Muyi includes several temples and pyramids, similar to other Maya sites. One of the most prominent structures is the Castillo, a pyramid that offers panoramic views of the surrounding jungle and lagoons. Check out this pyramid here. Not too big, pretty cute. And this is situated in the middle of nowhere. It's all jungle surrounding us and there is no one and there's like bird chirping everywhere. You just feel the nature. What do you think of the ruin? The site also has a network of sac bayob, raised causeways, connecting various structures. I haven't immersed myself in this type of jungle for a while. There are a lot of mosquitoes though, but I use repellent all over me, so. One of Muyi's standout feature is its unique location within the lush tropical landscape of Siang Am Biosphere Reserve a UNESCO World Heritage Site, renowned for its rich biodiversity and serene lagoons. This setting sets Mui apart from many other Mayan sites, as it seamlessly blends history with the natural world. Look at what I found. Another ruin. This is uh, some kind of temple. Well, you could certainly go up here. I'm a total Indiana Jones right now. <laughs> Mui offers a remarkable journey into the heart of Mayan history and culture. The archaeological site is a testament to the enduring presence of this civilization. The relative tranquility allows for a more peaceful and intimate experience. You hear the bird? That is clearly a man-made structure. There are many sections of this, like in the ruin, they're not even restored. Okay, check this out. We have a bunch of these fruits hanging from the tree. I don't know what they are. Kind of looks like elongated cucumber type of thing. Here I see it. This is one of the shell. This one looks like guava. I don't know if you know guava, that's like uh, like an ice cream pot type of thing, maybe not. Now it is raining and we're waiting for the rain to pass by in this little canopy. It's not completely working, still get wet, but uh, <laughs> that's a uh, part of the experience. It's still raining, but it's better now. Very refreshing, have to say. Okay, now I have just finished touring the ruin. It is pretty cool. I enjoyed it. It's very peaceful. It rained a little bit, but now it has stopped. Now I'm gonna go back to my hotel, take a shower and change, and I'll be heading to Arca tonight to have my dinner. This is one of the Latin American's best 50 restaurants. Okay, all we have to do is just to wait for a collectivo now. <laughs> 